All right, guys, um, really quickly, I'm going to show you how to pH test your uh, kombucha tea. Now, again, if you're just enjoying your kombucha out of your brewing system, it's not really that necessary to pH test because the kombucha tea or the sweet tea that's in here is constantly being fermented by the culture, by the SCOBY. pH um, really gets involved when you go to bottle your tea because when you bottle your tea, you're removing the tea, right? out of, away from your culture. So your culture, your SCOBY is no longer in contact with your kombucha tea, right? So we wanna make sure that pH level is low enough to ensure that uh, pathogens uh, can, can exist. So meaning that if your pH level is below 3.0, okay, it's very hard for pathogens to live there. That's why like things like alcohol, um, apple cider vinegar, all have an unlimited shelf life and never go bad because it's, it's, it's so acidic uh, from a pH level point of view, it's impossible for any you know, bacteria, any harmful stuff to, to grow. Now kombucha is a little different because there is bacteria, there's you know, beneficial bacteria, but as long as we get that pH level low enough, we should be in good shape to bottle. Um, some other things to keep in mind is, because you know, P, uh, kombucha uh, alkalizes the body, so you're like, well, how is, why do we want a low pH level? Because low pH is acidic. Um, well, pH levels when you're testing and when ingested are two different things. So kombucha is a weak acid, and real quickly without getting too scientific, basically much like lemons, right? L uh, lemons are an, an acidic as well, but when you drink it, when it's ingested, it actually clings to um, alkalinized uh, minerals and becomes alkalinizing. Okay, if that, if hopefully that, that makes sense. We could do a whole advanced video more on the chemistry of kombucha and the chemistry of pH levels, but just keep in mind that um, even though kombucha is acidic in terms of testing the pH, when it's ingested, it becomes uh, alkalinizing to the body. All right, so we're gonna test the pH very simply by filling up your glass Okay, and I'm a lefty, but my my dodgeball inj injury is uh, preventing me from uh, from using my my go-to hand. Okay, and then taking your pH strip. Okay, your pH strip should look look like this. If it is a different color, because um, uh, we one point we sourced a different pH strip, and we still might continue. To, we're, we're constantly trying to perfect our pH uh, strips. Um, so if your color is a different color than this, we'll also have a screen with the different colors and the different charts. But for now, if you do have an orange pH strip, we're going to dip it in. And notice that it is somewhere in the middle, right? So we're not doing it on top like this, and we're not doing it all the way in the bottom. Somewhere in the middle, so it's kind of like just floating, okay? And we're going to count to about 15 seconds now. I've been blabbing on purpose, you see? I'm that professional, guys. I even count my blabbing time, which has been about 15 seconds, okay? You can give it a little shake. And we're gonna wait again about five seconds. And we're gonna show that color, okay? And with the magic of, of uh, technology, we're also gonna post a entire color spectrum of, a, uh, of the pH chart, so you could even compare and contrast. Um, we have it up on our site, but this way you could have it on, uh, on this video as well. So when you test your pH levels using your pH strips, just simply refer back to this video um, to test. Now, um, some people discard this, but I hate wasting kombucha, so I end up <laughs> drinking it. Cheers. Mm. Again, don't test the pH from in your brewer. Always fill it up in a glass and test it in a glass.